under the rules of the House to be advised by counsel during your testimony. Do you wish to be represented by counsel? Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or form testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth, and matter pending before this committee? Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, we'll look forward to your opening statement, then after that we're probably going to run and have to do some votes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to appear before you today to discuss the important issue of Toyota recent uh, safety recalls. Ever since I was sworn in as the Secretary of Transportation 13 months ago, I have said that safety is the Department's number one priority. I'd like to think that we have demonstrated that commitment time and time and time again. When the terrible crash of the Washington Metro system claimed nine lives and injured dozens of others last summer, we quickly introduced legislation to give us federal safety oversight of transit systems sometimes we don't currently have. When Colgan Air Flight 3407 crashed in Buffalo, we learned right away what many of the problems were and we did not wait a year for the NTSB to conclude its investigation before we acted. We began working the aviation industry immediately to enhance airline safety and pilot training, holding 12 safety summits around the country. This spring, the FAA will issue a new rule to combat pilot fatigue, and it has already been to begun to overhaul pilot certificate uh, pilot certification qualifications. One of the hallmarks of my time as Transportation Secretary has been our work on distracted driving. For all of you with cell phones and Blackberries and other electronic devices, I'm on a rampage about people talking and texting while driving a bus, a car, a train, or a plane. It's a menace to society and we recently exercised our authority to ban truck drivers from texting. The reason I say all of this, my number one priority has been and will be, as long as I'm in this post, safety. Now for Toyota. The Toyota recall situation is very serious and we're treating it seriously. The three recalls involving Toyota are among the largest in automobile history, affecting more than six million people in this country. And I'd like to say a word directly to consumers. If you notice that your gas pedal or your brake is not responding as it normally would, contact your Toyota dealer right away. The recent recalls involve three issues. First, accelerator pedal entrapment by floor mats, which can lead to uncontrolled acceleration at very high speeds. It's important to take your floor mats out of the driver's side of your vehicle until your car has been repaired for this problem by a Toyota dealer. Second, accelerator pedals sticking or returning slowly after being depressed. If the pedal is harder to, uh, to depress or slower to return after releasing it, this could be the precursor to what is known as a sticky pedal. If your metal has three symptoms, if your metal has these symptoms, contact your Toyota dealer immediately. If your gas pedal becomes stuck for any reason, steadily apply the brake, put the car in neutral, bring it to a stop in a safe place and call your dealer. Finally, with the Toyota Prius for model year 2010 and the Lexus HS250, if you experience a change in your car's braking performance, contact your Toyota dealer. Now I want everyone to know that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has been one of the mo has the most effective defect investigation programs in the world, known as NHTSA. Its job is to investigate complaints and to look for defects. It receives more than 30,000 complaints from consumers every year and reviews every one of them quickly and carefully. Over just the past three years, NHTSA's defect and compliance investigation have resulted in 524 recalls involving 23.5 million cars. Of the 100 investigation NHTSA opened in an average year, there are currently 44 open defect investigations, five in which involve Toyota. Every step of the way, NHTSA officials have pushed Toyota to take corrective action so that consumers could be safe. Unhappy with Toyota responsiveness to our safety concerns, the acting administrator, of NHTSA, Ron Medford, and two associates flew to Japan in December of 2009 to clarify for Toyota management what the company's legal obligations are to find and remedy safety defects in vehicles sold here. In January, our new administrator of NHTSA, David Strickland and Ron Medford, now our deputy administrator, told the president of Toyota North America in no uncertain terms that we expect prompt action following the disclosure of the sticky pedal. 
Toyota publicly announced that recall two days later. And I've also talked personally to the president of Toyota with potential fatal defects on the road. NHTSA has pressed hard to expedite these safety fixes. If NHTSA had opened a formal investigation and Toyota had res resisted a recall, this would have consumed an enormous amount of time and resources, in effect, extending the period in which owners of affected vehicles were at risk. By engaging Toyota directly and persuading the company to take action, the agency avoided a lengthy investigation that would have delayed fixes for a year or more. Last week, I announced that we are investigating whether Toyota acted quickly enough in reporting these safety defects to NHTSA, as well as whether they took all appropriate action to protect consumers. We have asked Toyota to turn over a wide range of documents which will show us when and how they learned about these safety problems. NHTSA will continue to make sure to Toyota is doing all it has promised to make its vehicle safe. We will continue to investigate all possible causes of unintended acceleration. While the recalls are important steps in that direction, we don't maintain that they answer every question about that issue. Some people believe that electromagnetic interference has a dangerous effect on these vehicles, although we are not aware of any incidents proven to be the cause by such interference. NHTSA is doing a thorough review of that subject to ensure safety. If NHTSA finds a problem, we will make sure it's resolved. Recently, I spoke with, by phone with Mr. Toyota. He assured me that Toyota takes U.S. safety concerns very seriously and that safety is the company's top priority. I intend to hold him to that. Finally, I want to remind everyone there is a reason we investigate safety defects and there's a reason we push automakers to do the right thing. I listened to the 911 tape of the Saylor family's harrowing last moments. Mark Saylor, a California highway patrolman, died last year along with his wife and his daughter and his brother-in-law when the accelerator got stuck and the Lexus they were driving crashed at more than 120 miles an hour. That is a horrible tragedy and I, one I hope that no other family has to endure. Now, Mr. Chairman, I, I know that uh, you all have to go vote, and I'm certainly willing to stay and answer all the questions that any member wants. I want the committee to know I was sworn in on January 23rd, 09. I'll take a back seat to nobody on safety. I've done a lot. We've done a lot. So I'll try and answer every question as specifically as I can during my time as the secretary and for those that I don't know the answer to prior to my tenure, I'll be happy to get all the information possible for the record. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And you're right, we do have votes. We have five votes. We're going to be in recess until 5.30. 5.30. And uh, appreciate if you would stay, and we look forward to answering questions then. If you want to walk to the floor with us, you're more than welcome to do so. Tomorrow, Toyota President Akio Toyota will testify before the House Oversight Committee, joined by his North American Chief Executive. That hearing, to learn more about the sudden acceleration problem,